Hey everybody, um, I'm going to make a short video today. I really hope I can upload this. I've had some extreme difficulty uploading videos. They just haven't been um, where I, I, I want them to be. And so I have a really quick question also. If anybody sees this, that could maybe answer um, uh, some confusion I have. On my last video, I noticed that the views as well as the likes kept depleting and um, the first time it happened I thought I was mistaken I thought I was straight up tripping the second third time it happened um, this happened for an hour that I paid attention to off and on my likes would go from eight back to zero from four to one from two to one I mean it would just jump back and forth and now I think it's like leveled off at two for the likes, but the views themselves in real time with my own eyes. And I was even like taking screenshots to verify um, that I'm not like losing it. So um, if anybody can explain, like, am I not missing or understanding something basic? Am I missing something obvious? I don't know like really about the logistics behind the scenes of um, YouTube. I've never really had a social media account that um, I've tried to do anything with. And so this is, this is still pretty like, um, social media is like a pretty uh, new field for me. I don't know what, how that's even possible. How can the views themselves go down? Aren't the views the views? And if you have less than 10 views, like why would it possibly, how could it go down and why would it go down? Like it's eight views like it's so silly which now it's um it's gone up obviously I don't think the likes ever did and I know for a fact I even took screenshots that they were higher than two likes um I didn't check it in a, in a while so maybe it's changed but anyway I, I'm just like really confused about how that that's happened um if anybody could like text or leave a comment explaining that if I'm like not missing not seeing something or understanding something obvious um I just wanted to make a video I've been trying to get this out it's a um you know life life is chaotic and life is only going to I think um get more extreme and what that I am finding demands of us is um is autonomy and living and thinking for ourselves you know um you know even like this is gonna get kind of like a deep specific example but cops for example if a cop is told to do something or if anybody in a job has a boss and they're told to do something and it's like huh in my gut that feels unsafe that feels wrong that feels like a um you know, a misdirection or something like if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. I think we need to really disconnect ourselves, um, fully from these like false, um, powers, you know, um, just because like, it's a doctor that says something doesn't necessarily, they're not God. And I know they have a lot of times a God complex, even nurses sometimes, and a lot of people in healthcare, a lot of people don't, but a lot of people in healthcare that I have even personally met do seem to have kind of that God complex. Um, so, you know, that's another example, just in all these authority positions, these are, there, we're all people, we're all trying to make it. So, and I think if we, um, don't take autonomy and really think for ourselves, Hey, does this feel right in my gut, your logical mind and your ego mind and your egoic point of view, a hundred percent is wrong, but your gut is not going to be wrong. And that's really what I found out since getting sober, you know, um, since starting to live and just kind of living, um, thinking for myself and being myself and, and, and living from this place of self-love and self-respect. It's like your gut, it doesn't tell you wrong. It doesn't. Your soul knows. That's what I think your gut is. It's your soul's knowing, trying to tell you, Hey, you know, go, listen to me, go with me. I actually know what I'm talking about. And I just think we all just need to be operating from that place of, of, you know, not pushing our gut aside because, oh, my boss told me to do this. You know, the police chief said to do that. 
this academic says this, this doctor says this, my, you know, a learned neighbor or family member says this. And it's like, no, my gut tells me otherwise. And I'm going to operate from there, you know? Um, so it's just like, God, to, for me to address, um, to kind of live in this autonomy and really be okay being myself and be okay in reality and reality without ha feeling the need to poison and alter my consciousness, what um, a big thing for me has been processing trauma and finding my voice and, and saying, okay, this was my trauma and I'm just going to say it, say it out loud, speak it, process it in a real way. I wallowed in trauma. I transmuted trauma. I downplayed trauma. I ignored it. I did every single thing that you can do with trauma other than address it process it and move move past it i absolutely wallowed in the painful stench of trauma my whole life because i didn't know how to address it and you know for me even it has been very empowering just to say um just to say you know what like this is trauma because i say it is you know and um i almost like cringe a little bit because you know, one of the things I think the media has done that's really sneaky is, is make trauma and in, in to be kind of like, um, you know, they, they just use it and blown, um, pain and suffering into something else and into something that they can manipulate, uh, for an angle and actually to keep us in a weakened state in my, um, conspiratorial opinion, they want to keep us down and weakened, which I think is pretty obvious at this point. But, you, you know, the point is when you talk about trauma and, and your feelings are valid they are that's the thing they really are um just make sure it's not coming from you, you know the government or from oh a, your, your celebrity of choice or you know this external as long as it's coming from you it's valid all day every day and so for me it was like a really big thing it was really empowering and it was really like the heart of my issues was to go back to um the ch childhood trauma of just growing up and living life and going through early childhood pretty much my whole life um feeling like you know unaccepted I, I wasn't heard I wasn't listened to I wasn't accepted my opinions were not valid um I was I was invalidated and you know I just carried around this pain and in my head you know, you could say it's mental illnesses or maybe it's a, you know, a maladaptive reaction to that trauma. But for whatever reason, in my head, I, I didn't take it as, okay, this is something I need to um, process this pain and, you know, grow from it. I thought, well, I must be um, unworthy then. I must have a reason to, you know, need to um, not trust myself, you know, and not listen to myself. So just actually saying out loud, hey, you know, I had amazing parents. My parents loved me. Two-parent household, middle-class family. I had a super productive, very loving, very functional family in so many ways. But that does not negate or, or make it untrue that, um, that I wasn't accepted or, you know, loved for me. I was... I felt like the love was very conditional on me being this ideal, this like, you know, prodigal golden child or whatever. Um, and, you know, it, it's, and that's okay to say. And it took me a long time to even be okay, okay saying that, you know, like that, that is traumatic. That is traumatic, not being able to um, express yourself, not feeling okay, um, but the big thing was, was like acknowledging that trauma and the pain of that. And then also, um, acknowledging that, you know, the trauma itself is something that has to be dealt with and acknowledged and processed and the pain and, and all the issues and things that that can call the trauma can cause. But what affected my life for so long more than the trauma, and this is true, I think, for all trauma, even the worst trauma, it's really not the, the, the trauma itself. It's the reaction to it. It was my um, 
lack of a reaction to it. The fact that I did try to sweep it under the rug, ignore it, think it was just like, oh, well, that wasn't trauma. That's that's not even a valid uh, thought to think. It, I was the problem, you know. I actually was inadequate. Um, my reaction to to that pain caused additional trauma. And so, like, that, that's a, a huge thing to acknowledge. Acknowledge the trauma, whatever it is. Acknowledge the pain. Begin to process those. And also, it is so huge for standing in your autonomy um, is to acknowledge that or, or to be aware that your reaction um, to trauma is may have very well been the problem, you know, because it was for me. It was the trauma, but it was also, more importantly, the reaction to it, you know. Um, even like if you have um, with mental illness, it's not like, for me at least, just speaking for myself, my problem wasn't my personality disorder or, or bipolar. That wasn't the problem. The problem was was that I, I didn't feel like I could live with myself. I didn't feel like I could live life, you know. I mean, if you can't live live life. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. If you feel like you can't live, then guess what? You can't, you know, and you're going to live up to that, um, expectation of failure. Um, but you know, if you, I, I'm just like, would I've even had these mental disorders? If I had had a strong sense of self, if I had been able to live with myself, if I had had a sense of worthiness and a sense of self, would I have even been diagnosed with mental illness? I don't know, you know, but um, acknowledge your trauma, address your pain. It's all valid. If, if you felt like you were um, unheard, if, if your love felt, if love felt very contingent, you know, um, it's, it's all valid if that's the way you felt. But acknowledge that, acknowledge the pain, process it, and, um, and, and then also keep in mind that your reaction to the trauma or your, you know, your maladaptive reactions to the trauma was also something that needs to be addressed separately, you know? Um, so anyway, that's what's on my mind. I hope y'all have a good night.